Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about sourcing and what that means, and as well as the preferred style for Bash for sourcing, although that part's debatable. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so before we talk about sourcing at all, I kind of have to describe another related technology because otherwise it makes no sense. And that is the way that environment variables work with processes. And so we're going to, and this is specific to Linux. It's a little bit different on Windows. So yeah, it's Linux, Linux, Linux stuff. Um, but the way you can think about environment variables and processes is that they are inherited, but immutable. And so in order to kind of demo that, let's imagine that these blobs are processes and that they have, you know, some environment variables in them. Let's say user equals acetily and path equals, I don't know, bin. user bin and bin or something like that. And let's say that this is, I don't know, bash as a process. And bash spawns some sort of sub process. So it creates a new process. Maybe I ran Python, for example. Python, so this is the parent-child relationship here. And let's say that in Python, I ran some code that was like os.environ uh foo or i don't know user you're overriding something equals bub i don't know <laughs> something something like that um and so what this is going to do is within this python process it's going to set user equals bub but this process cannot change its parents environment at all so um even though it set bub here the bash process will still see the user as acetily. And uh, you know, this will also inherit any other variables as well. So if you had like foo equals bar uh, and you were to print uh, print os.environ foo, uh, this will get inherited from the parent process. So you'll be able to see any of its parent environment variables, uh, but you'll only be able to modify your own environment. And then, you know, if the Python process were to spawn some other process, um, you know, whatever process you wanted to spawn here, maybe it's, I don't know, maybe another bash process, whatever. Uh, this bash process will also inherit the Python processes environment, which also inherits this bash processes. Um, so if you were to, you know, echo foo, you would get bar. And if you did echo user, you would get bub. Um, well, bash may also change user as part of setup, but imagine this is you know some process that doesn't do any special setup and doesn't set any special variables. So it it would inherit these variables directly from its parent process. Okay, so that's the first part about this. Uh, environments are inherited. You can't change your parents. Um, so let's talk about source and why it is interesting. And the most common case that you'll see source involved in is or at least if you're a Python developer, is working with virtual environments. Um, you may also see source involved if you're dealing with .m files. So let's say, uh, I don't know, secret equals whatever, some secret value. Um, so .m is another situation where you'll deal with source a lot. And what source is, is it's a bash way to run a shell script, but modify the current environment. So normally if I would have, um, uh, and, and you, you'd normally do not make files that are sourceable also executable. So it's usually non-executable, it's sourceable or executable, you run it and it doesn't modify the environment. Um, but we're gonna, we're gonna make this executable just to show what it would do. Um, so this, if we call dot slash dot env, so that's going to execute it you'll see that it ran that. And even though it would have set these variables, they are not set in the parent process. And this is basically the diagram that I showed you in paint before. Um, but typically sourced files are not um, executable. Uh, yeah. And they typically do not have a shebang. So people will often put not executable bash in here or put it with slashes or whatever. 
And this is often to just tell their text editor to highlight it properly. So for instance, mine notices that bash is in here. And so it's highlighting it as a shell script, even though that's not actually executable bash. And that way, if somehow this were made executable and you tried to run it, uh, you would get an error that says, you know, not executable bash, bad interpreter. But anyway, so that's that's uh, the first part about this is kind of the conventions around uh, owning the file or not. Uh, but next, I wanted to actually talk about sourcing. And to do that, you will use the source bash built in. And just don't, don't, jump, don't, don't jump ahead yet, uh, but the source bash built in is actually a bash specific thing. And I'll actually show you the more portable way to do this later. Um, but you'll run source. And so what source does is it reads this file and then executes its line by line, but in the current process. So now if we look at dollar sign foo, you'll see that it is set to bar and dollar sign secret, which is another thing that we want to do here. And similarly, if we look at our virtual env, there is an activate script inside the virtual env. And what this activate script does, uh, and see this here, this file must be used directly with short source bin activate from bash. You cannot run it directly. And it does some other stuff, like it validates that you have to source this. Uh, there's a deactivate function that it puts into scope. And most of the magic of what source does is it modifies the path environment variables. So that allows you to you know, change what things are, you know, what commands run when you type them on the command line. Uh, but this is kind of the magic of this, of this activate script. The rest of it is not super interesting for this discussion, but. It does, you know, do some stuff that's important anyways, like set virtual env, adjust PS1, et cetera. And if we were to try and run that script, we have been activate, uh, we'll get permission denied. This is, of course, because it's not executable. Somehow it became executable. Um, you'll get that, let's see, activate, right. You'll get that message that says you have to source this, um, but you should not be activating that file, or you should not be making that file executable. Um, but you will run it with source. And uh, this is where I'll actually introduce the <laughs> controversial part. Uh, the source built in is actually specific to bash. And even though it is self-documenting and you know I think reads nicer, um, I prefer to use the actual way to source things, which is the dot command. Um, this, of course, is you know, less easy to read, but this is more portable. Now, readability and portability, you could argue about that and say like, oh, well, you know, hopefully we're not on machines that are super ancient, so you can just use source. Yeah, that's fine. Um, pick something and stick with it. I like to stick with dot because of the reasons I stated. Uh, but dot is an alias for source in Bash. And so you can see here when I ran this, it activated my virtual env. It also adjusted my path and it made a deactivate function. Um, and if I run deactivate, it's going to undo all those changes by running this function here. Um, but it, the, the important part is in order to do the virtual env magic, it has to modify the running process. And so that's why source gets involved. But anyway, that's source as well as dot and kind of a, a little description about how environment variables work in processes on Linux. Hopefully this was useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.